It's hot today, and we're going to pay the price for that. We've got a cold front coming, so we lose the intense heat for tomorrow, but we're going to have some showers and thunderstorms along this front that we are going to deal with, and some could be strong. You see the slight risk tonight in northwest Ohio. Damaging winds are going to be the primary threat here, and we've already seen some storms begin to fire off because of the heat that we acquired during the day today, bubbling up in western Ohio, but even stronger storms moving into northern Indiana. Uh, Antwerp and pain in the path of these storms in the next few minutes. So now is the time to gather your family. Go to your tornado shelter, which is the lowest floor of your home away from windows and doors as we ride this tornado warning out together here. Again, I'm going to step over to the wall and talk to you about some of the storms that are headed your way, too, as we look at Paulding County here. These storms coming from Indiana, moving really fast. And what you're going to notice, a few little notches on these storms here. You can get some inflow, some wind going up into the storm right in here. This would be the area in which you'd see some rotation right up here. Also, just on the east side of Fort Wayne near New Haven. This is all moving pretty quickly, though, to our border counties, taking us into Holding County by 830. Now these storms have a history of damaging winds. That's why we're seeing a winds in excess of 70 miles an hour possible here. But it's these little areas of inflow where the wind rushes into the storm that we could have some brief rain wrap tornadoes, which means with the rain falling, these potential tornadoes would be very difficult to see. So you want to go ahead and head to your tornado safe spot in your home, the basement if you have it, as we wait for this storm storm to move into Paulding County, which will happen in the next five to 10 minutes here, five to 10 minutes until we cross the border from Indiana into Ohio. As the storm races eastward, I'm going to go back to the weather center here and expand your view. Here comes the velocity data. Let's see what we have. Now you can see in this particular picture here, and I do want to show you this, that as we look at the velocity, that's wind up in the sky, we see two different shades here. We have reds, which would be headed away from the radar site in northern Indiana and greens, which are winds up in the sky headed to the radar site in northern Indiana. When you get these two different colors, the reds and the greens so close to one another, that means there is some rotation up in the sky. And that's indeed why there was that tornado warning that was issued on this storm cell that's coming out of Indiana and headed eastward into Paulding County. I'll go ahead and remove this velocity data, this wind data from your picture so you can just see the radar and now looking at the radar, it also supports this thought as you have winds coming in this direction here feeding into this thunderstorm and winds wrapping around. You're going to see some rotation right in here and that's why that tornado warning continues. So Harlan, Indiana going to be located uh, right in here south of Woodburn. OK, so as we look at where this storm is going, if you're between Antwerp and Payne, Antwerp and Payne, you're going to be in the path of this potential tornado here. Now we know a funnel cloud was reported, a funnel cloud reported near Harlan, Indiana, as the storm moves eastward about 35 miles an hour. Well, it was about a three hour ride. And as a matter of fact, there at the South Pole, you don't land on wheels, you land on skis as a a matter of fact, and you slide in down the runway. So we made it. Uh, it's really, really isolated, but I can say that I've been there now. Did you feel like you were ever in any danger? I mean, is it scary going to the South Pole? It's not scary. They do try to give you medication ahead of time because the altitude is almost two miles above sea level, so you can't exert yourself. That's about the. We are supposed to board a plane late tonight, early tomorrow morning, and fly back to Christchurch. Of course, that's weather permitting, so we'll keep you posted. All right. Thank you very much, Harrison, and stay safe. You can chat with Harrison about his trip to Antarctica this evening. He's hosting a live Twitter chat from 930 to 1015 tonight. Just send your questions with the hashtag Destination Antarctica, and you can read more about Harrison's journey, including a daily blog with photos of his trip. Just go to ONNTV.com. Welcome to Antarctica, one of the coldest and emptiest places on Earth. There are no permanent residents here, but there are plenty of penguins and sea life along the coast. A giant ice sheet covers 98% of the continent and is the largest single mass of ice on our planet. The views are magnificent. 
For miles, you can see ice shelves and beautiful mountain ranges. The climate is unforgiving, though. The average high at the South Pole is 57 degrees below zero. Only a small number of people dare to endure these conditions, and more than a few are Ohioans who are here to take advantage of the awe-inspiring landscape the continent provides for scientific research and adventure. I made my way to the last unexplored frontier, Antarctica, to observe what life is like on the continent and see how Ohioans are contributing to America's scientific endeavors. It's a long flight to the bottom of the earth. My journey started by flying more than 8,500 miles from Columbus, Ohio, all the way to Christchurch, New Zealand. Christchurch is a hub for the United States Antarctic program and is a gateway city to the ice. Once there, the U.S. government fit me with special clothing to ensure I was prepared for the environment. Men or ecosystem changes without knowing the big picture. And that big picture means looking at how changes here impact everyone on the globe. Research thousands of miles away and ultimately the answers that follow could change our habits here at home in Ohio. There are our close teleconnections and interrelationships between the changes that are going on um, in, o in Ohio and what's going on around the world. So we're, we're, we're trying to understand how they're all connected and how they relate on a larger scale to the planet as a whole. But it all has to start somewhere, and that place, with university professors in the lab and eager assistants in the field, is Antarctica. The research doesn't stop on the ice. Later, we'll go inside the Bird Polar Research Center on the Ohio State University campus to learn their role in investigating cooler climates. Plus... All the aircraft that fly from uh, McMurdo, uh, my, my folks have uh, full hands-on from the moment it land hits the ground uh, to the moment uh, that it leaves uh, the station. Men and women behind the scenes meet the Ohioans who oversee everything here, both in the air and on the runway. And we're cooking it up in Antarctica, what it takes to feed more than a thousand people in the middle of nowhere. But first, ST Knopf from Twitter asks, who was McMurdo Station named after? McMurdo Station is named for the McMurdo Sound in the Ross Sea. That was named for Lieutenant Archibald McMurdo of the HMS Terror. That boat charted the area in 1841 under command of British explorer James Clark Ross. Researchers have uncovered many mysteries locked into the Antarctic ice sheet over the last 60 years. Ohioans have had a significant contribution. These voices of today are optimistic about the future. The Earth will continue to change, for better or for worse. They hope the next generation of Ohioans join them to solve some of the lingering questions at the bottom of the Earth, questions that ultimately impact us all. Our scientists here make projections in terms of what the climate, the climate system uh, is likely to throw at us, you know, in 20 years, in 100 years, in 200 years. So that everyone should be uh, interested in that because that's our common future. Understanding how the planet responds to climate here where it's very, very sensitive is important to understanding climate change as a whole. Antarctica is key to a number of things in the world, the world environment, that might not be obvious. Virtually every glaciated area on the planet outside the polar regions is, re is losing mass and doing so rapidly. And what are the implications, what will the implications be? There's something about when you're doing primary science, it's, um, it's like you're extending the uh, universe of knowledge by a little bit, you know? And even no matter how small a little bit that is, it's, it's your little bit, you know, if you ask the right questions. Taxpayers have helped further science by investing more than $440 million in the U.S. Antarctic program just last year. This truly is the last unexplored frontier in the world. Scientists believe the money spent will provide answers for the biggest scientific questions of our time, like possible sea level rise, life on Mars, and a changing climate's impact on animals, all from right here at the bottom of the Earth in Antarctica. A 
is for advection. That means the transfer of a property in the atmosphere, like cold air or hot air, even humidity, by winds. Now take, for instance, our current weather situation and setup here. We had a cold front come through, and we're expecting lower temperatures on the way. We already have winds out of the northwest, and those winds are going to push in those lower temperatures for tomorrow morning. You look at the 24-hour temperature change, and we're starting to see some cool air funnel in. But by the time we head towards tomorrow, temperatures will be 15 to 20 degrees lower than what they were today. It's all because of a process called cold air advection. Keep a lookout right here on our Facebook page for more weather words. In Toledo was 105. Today we got to 100, so pretty close. We were about 6 degrees off in Cleveland, another 6 degrees off in Dayton. Columbus was 5 degrees off the all-time record high, and Cincinnati was only 4 degrees off the all-time record high. Today's high in Cincinnati, 104 degrees. Of course, we still do have those excessive heat warnings for much of the state. It was a hot one out there with heat index values well over 105 degrees. That's what it felt like outside. Now, the pattern with our weather has been winds from the south bringing that hot air in the last several days, explaining the string of 90 plus 100 plus degree days for the last couple. But changes are in sight for us. A cold front is coming. That'll bring some cooler air down. But guess what? These storms have a chance of being severe. I'll tell you the details. We'll talk about the threat for some severe weather in your forecast for tomorrow. Coming up in your Ohio weather on the tens. This is the Ohio River, this black line in through here. You see the rotation coming up as it moves just a bit. It is just due west of Bethel here. This is in Claremont County, southern Claremont County here, Eric, where uh, we're going to get a rush of wind going in this way. Also some wrap around and you're going to see your rotation right in here where that tornado could be on the ground. Uh, Moscow as we cross the Ohio River. So we're still talking about very, very close to the Ohio River communities uh, closing in on Claremont County, Moscow, Felicity, Felicity and Augusta. You're the next two communities that would be right in the path of this storm as you see the reds really close to the greens wrapping around one another and that would mean a chance of a tornado is going to be likely in Claremont County at this point as we eye those communities go ahead and get in your tornado shelter as we speak Eric Harrison where's that icon you have that triangle icon that's an indication that's a TBS signature where is that located that you see on your radar it is going to be almost directly over Moscow you'll be able to see that right here and what I do is when I mouse over it we can actually see the circulation up in the sky. This is high all the way down to the ground, Eric, just 3,000 feet off the ground, a very strong rotation as we get an update. So that would be a very good indication that a tornado would be on Tornadoes the ground. Tornadoes occurring at the Brown County being extended. And this is the same storm that we've been tracking all the way once it crossed the Ohio River. Reports of the damage and the tornado on the ground in Claremont County, and it has continued to move east towards Georgetown, uh, towards Bethel. Hammersville took a direct, potential direct hit, and then now we're headed more into uh, further into Brown County at this point. Point. These two cells have combined a little bit, and that interaction with the two different cells can create a little bit of a rotation, and that's why there was that potential tornado that's on the ground moving into Scioto County. Of course, Shawnee State Park is going to be really important. Eric, you have more information? Yeah. Regardless of whether there's a tornado or not, Eric, we're tracking these storms. They're moving east at about 70 miles an hour, and that would indeed mean at least destructive straight-line winds possible with this storm complex here as it races off towards the east.